So reduce and reduce right are uh, one of the uh, harder methods to grasp uh, just because um, instead of running an array, uh, instead of running every element uh, through a function and then getting a response, um, reduce and reduce right uh, will actually remember uh, the previous response and apply it the next time around. And I don't think I can describe it uh, better than the chart over on the Mozilla Developer Network. So I'm just going to show you uh, one of their examples here. Um, if you look at their example, they have an array that is just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then they call reduce. And then within reduce, they are using their callback function. And so far in this tutorial, we've been uh, pulling these call, callback functions out and naming them, but putting them inside here is uh, basically the same thing. Um, so instead, uh, before we have usually called um, an element here, and we've done element and then index and then array. But with reduce, we have previous value and current value. And you can see here that they return previous value plus current value. So there is two ways to call reduce. You can either not provide an initial value or you can provide an initial value. And if you don't provide an initial value, then the first time through, the first time it runs this function, the previous value will be set to the first value of the array. The current value will be the second element in the array. Um, if you do provide an initial value, down here they have one with an initial value of 10, and if the, they do provide one, instead of this, instead of uh, the first time through the function, instead of the previous value equal, equaling the first element of the array, it equals the initial value that you passed in, and the current value equals that first element of the array. But pretty much, if we go through this step by step, what's happening here is it calls this function on the, on the first positions of the array. So like I said here, there's no initial value. So the previous value is 0, the current value is 1. And what we're returning is previous value plus current value. So 0 plus 1, and then we can see over here they have the return value listed. 0 plus 1 is 1. And now this return value is saved as the previous value the next time around. So now, uh, if we come down here to the second call, this previous value is now equal to 1. And then the current value is the next value in the array, which is 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3. So that 3 gets saved as the previous value for the next call. So 3, and then we move on to the next value in the array, which is now 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6, and then 6 gets carried over to the previous value again, and then the next value in the array is 4, so previous value is 6, current value is 4, 6 plus 4 equals 10. Um, so basically, this reduce function is just a way to sum up all these values. And if you provide the initial value here, then it does the same thing, except it just has this one extra call at the beginning that takes the initial value and adds it to the first element of the array. And then that return value gets passed in as the previous value uh, for the second call, and it moves to the next index. Um, so if I pull this up in our examples here, we have this array that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, if I made a function, called add values and remember we'll have previous we'll have current and we can also pass in the index and we can also pass in the array um, so what we'll do here uh, we'll just I'll just show you the example that they had so let's return previous plus current and then let me uncomment out this result variable here and we'll set the result equal to ray 17 dot reduce and we will pass in add values and save that and let me output this to the screen 
and you can see that the reduced result is 15 because 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 10 plus 5 is 15. Um, so what if we did this with an array of characters? So I'll uncomment that. And now you can see this re reduced result is A, B, C, D, E because the first time through it does A plus B and then uh, A plus B, which is AB, gets passed in as the previous value. So then the next time through you have AB plus C and then the next time through you have ABC plus D and then you have ABCD plus E. Um, so that's how that works. And I grouped together reduce and reduce right uh, to show you at the same time because reduce right instead of starting at the zeroth element and working to the right what reduce right does is it starts at the end and it just goes to the left um, so if I was to do reduce right to these add values then you can see now this reduce result is reversed because it starts off here at E and E is the previous value current value is D so it says E plus D which is ED then the next time through ED is the previous value and then ED plus C is EDC then EDC plus B and then EDCB plus A and then you get uh, the entire reversed string as the result. So hopefully that makes sense. I know that this is uh, one of the more complicated methods that we took a look at. Um, just to come kind of uh, hammer it in, let's take a look at doing this with an object. So let me uncomment out this and okay. Now you have to be careful when you're working with objects and this is why reduce uh, can be a little complicated because you might run into some things that you didn't expect. So for example, if I was to do total age here, then, okay, so we give previous, current, and then we'll just leave off the index in an array since we're not using it. <clears throat> so you would think that we could just do something like this, previous.age plus current.age. And you think that this would go through all of these elements here and see and add up all the ages, the sum total, total of the ages, just like it did for the integers. Um, but if we run this, bar result, let's do array, this is array 17, array 17 dot reduce, and this is total age, and save that, and let's output this to the screen. Okay, you can see that the reduce result is not a number. So what's the deal here? What happened? Um, <clears throat> well, if we look at this further, then you see I have some comments here. Um, whenever we first run through this total age function, it starts off, since we don't have an initial value, the previous value will be the first down here where we've printed out the original. This previous value will be uh, an object with name Corey and age 28. And the current will be an object with a name John and age 52. So we're saying previous.age plus current.age. So 28 plus 52, that returns 80. Okay, so that's what we expected. But then the next time through, the next time it calls total age, um, this return value gets passed in as previous. So then we get to the point where it gets to previous.age plus current.age, but it sees this 80, and this 80 doesn't have a, an age property. So it doesn't know what to do, and then that's where it kind of blows up. So how can we solve something like this? It's just something that we need to be aware of. Um, so we can do uh, probably the best way, there's probably multiple ways to solve this, but uh, probably one of the better ways is just to pass in an initial value of zero and then here instead of previous dot age we could just do previous plus current dot age and now what happens here um, whenever you pass in an, in an initial value um, let me go ahead and change 
what my example is down here. So let me move some of this stuff around. Okay, so previous will be the initial value of zero. Current is going to be the first value of our array, which is an object with the name Corey and the age 28. So then we run previous, which is zero, plus current.age, which is 28. So zero plus 28 is 28. And then this return value gets assigned to previous on the next call. So we have previous, which is 28, um, plus we're not looking up the dot age property, so it's previous, which is 28, plus current dot age, which is this object here, 52. Um, so this will return 80. Save that. And then the next time through, it'll do 80 plus uh, 36, which you can see down here now um, on in our HTML, it's outputting uh, 116. So that's what we expect when it adds up all those ages. Um, so that's just something that you have to look out for. It might not be, uh, um, you have to uh, keep in mind not only what's gonna happen the first time you run through the method, or through the method reduce, but you have to keep in mind uh, what it's gonna be looking at uh, every time it runs through and what previous values uh, you're going to be, um, or what values you're gonna be assigning to that previous variable. Um, so hopefully uh, that was um, a good look at reduce and you understand how that works. Um, so now let's take a look at uh, the map method.